Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee Talk. Uh, my name is Torrance Cost. Uh, there might have been a little delay there, uh, just kind of uh, getting going with the uh, the tech here, the pre-scheduled posts. Uh, just make sure we're up. And uh, there we go. Uh, welcome to Coffee Talk. My name is Torrance, and uh, this is the tenth episode of our Coffee Talk series. I'm live this morning uh, from unceded Lekwungen territories, uh, the land of the Esquimalt and Songhees nations, uh, so-called Victoria, BC. And again, this is uh, the, the 10th episode of our Coffee Talk series, a weekly chat where Wilders Committee campaigners hang out. Uh, we talk about what, the, what kind of issues we're working on and, uh, and we try and have some fun. So grab a coffee if you don't have one. My partner and I have a seven week, seven and a half week old uh, baby at home, so I drink quite a few of these. And uh, we're going to talk about some forests, uh, and we're going to have some fun. So to start, uh, why why do Christmas trees have so much trouble sewing? Because they keep dropping all their needles. Did uh, did any of you happen to hear about the uh, the new top forty radio station that's that's run by trees? Yeah, they play all the most popular songs. And speaking of music, what did the 1990s R&B group Tree LC say to the undergrowth, to the bushes? They said, I don't want no shrubs. A shrub is a guy who can't get no love from me. So I, uh, I want to talk today about forests, uh, hence all the, uh, the amazing tree jokes. Uh, I want to talk about uh, BC Timber Sales, which is the BC government's own logging agency. Uh, if, uh, if you're following along, uh, post some questions in the comments uh, as I'm talking and I'll answer those at the end. Uh, if you can share this uh, on your page to help us get more views, uh, help people watch it later uh, after the broadcast this morning, uh, that would be really appreciated. And uh, hit that like button too so that it, it bumps up and, uh, and other folks can, can see what we're doing. Um, so if you've recovered from, from those terrible jokes, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll jump right into it. Um, BC Timber Sales is the government of British Columbia's own logging agency. Uh, it's run through the Ministry of Forests and it uh, controls about one fifth or 20% of all logging in BC. Uh, the rest, the other four fifths, uh, are various uh, tenures leased out to, to various logging companies, uh, communities, First Nations sometimes. And BC Timber Sales is, uh, is a focus of ours right now because uh, of the kind of logging they're doing. So it's, uh, it's not the issue of government uh, involvement in logging that's, not being, that's, that's necessarily the problem. Um, with an, with a with a th something like forests, uh, having uh, oversight and, and management by the public uh, isn't isn't the problem. It's what BC Timber Sales is doing. If you if you Google you know old growth logging or community opposed to logging and uh, and select the news hits, um, all of the most uh, all of the most a lot of the most controversial uh, logging that's happened in the province of BC. In the last couple of years, has been done by BC Timber Sales, uh, from the Numint Valley to Schmidt Creek to uh, the Skagit Headwaters Donut Hole. Um, this is uh, an, an agency that should be managing forests in the public interest, and uh, and they're and they're logging uh, old growth and other rare uh, and endangered forests as as fast, uh, as quickly, and as greedily as any logging company. Um, Forest in BC, uh, just to, to give a, a big snapshot, I did my first coffee talk uh, a month or so ago, a couple of months ago, about, about old growth and, and, and the problems uh, that, that it's facing. But essentially, uh, forests grow back, forests can be regenerated, but old growth can't. These forests, uh, these forests develop over, over 10,000 years, and they... Uh, they can't be replaced just by, by, by humans replanting them. So we need to have forests. We, we need to have forestry, pardon me. We need to have a logging industry. Uh, we need to use forest resources, um, but, but it, can't, uh, it, can't, can, it can't be the continued uh, liquidation of the last, uh, of the last old growth forests. And, and it certainly can't be the government as a part of that. 
Um, so we have lots more uh, information uh, about old growth on our website. Um, I can post something uh, in the comments here uh, later. But uh, today I want to I want to focus on on BCTS. And usually uh, this time of year, uh, the spring, as the weather's getting nicer and the, and the days are long, is when we are out in the field uh, documenting uh, logging activity. We're out in communities, meeting with locals, meeting with uh, Indigenous uh, folks uh, who, who, these, who these forests belong to at the end of the day, and uh, building trails uh, through some rare and endangered forests. That looks a little different uh, this spring, obviously, with the pandemic. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work to to bring the forest to to you, um, and a and a project that uh, we put a ton of work into, uh, both myself uh, and our mapping and communications department, is uh, is what we're calling the BC Timber Sales Story Map. So we launched the uh, the story map uh, a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, one of my colleagues will drop it into the comments uh, now. And essentially what this is, is an ArcGIS program that highlights, uh, that, that's, that, that presents an interactive map to highlight uh, what BC Timber Sales is up to. Um, and, uh, and if you click on the, uh, hang on, I'll just, I'll drop the link in there. Um, and, uh, if you click on that link that uh, that was just sorry, that's the wrong one. <laughs> um, the second link here, um, that's uh, that's the story map, and it's got a uh, a whole bunch of uh, of different uh, features. There's a snapshot of of BC timber sales logging, um, which highlights some some uh, photography by ourselves and and our partners and allies. Uh, as well as an interactive map, so you can kind of zoom around the province, go to your area, and see exactly where uh, BC Timber Sales is logging, where they're planning cut blocks, uh, and um, and then there's a hotspots guided tour, which again uh, focuses in on some of the areas where uh, we've done a lot of field work in the past and research, uh, and where folks that we work with uh, have done have done research um, and and got out into the field. Um, there's a what's at stake uh, photo gallery which shows uh, forests that haven't yet been logged by BC timber sales but that are that are on the chopping block so to speak um, and then and then there's how you can help uh, there's there's our take action page um, which I'll talk a bit more about uh, in a few minutes but essentially we've we've utilized the time that we have uh, you know spending spending more time working from home uh, not out in the field to put this tool together. And our hope is that as it gets a little bit safer uh, to get out into the field uh, and, to, and to go and document uh, logging, go and see areas where BC Timber Sales operates, that we'll be able to crowdsource uh, the rest of, of this map and, uh, and really uh, build a wholesome picture of, of what BC Timber Sales is up to. Um, a lot of people in the province don't don't know that uh, in addition to making all the rules about about logging in BC, the BC government is 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 actively in on it as well. Um, and uh, and again, you know, in, in our messaging to to the provincial government, to the minister of forests, we've said, look, you know, changing the rules around old growth, uh, ending old growth logging, protecting these rare forests. And uh, and creating a new kind of forestry, this is this is a tall task, right? There's a there's a reason why governments have been kicking the can on this and avoiding it uh, for 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 thirty years. Uh, it, it, it's it's hard work, uh, and no one says it isn't. But the place to start is is in, in your in your own house, in your own shop, uh, and and that's with the Ministry of Forests and its logging agency, BC Timber Sales. So this is where. Uh, forest uh, law, law should change first. Um, the minister can issue a directive to BC Timber Sales to, to end old growth logging uh, and BC Timber Sales can start to model uh, what the future of forestry could look like uh, in, in BC. Um, so, so sustainably uh, cutting second and third growth, uh, sending those logs to requiring that those logs be sent only to mills uh, in BC rather than overseas as raw log exports, 
and really turning over a lot of the uh, the control uh, and ideally the logging tenure and 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 the land to First Nations. Um, I mentioned the territories when I started out, and uh, and and I'm on the Corngan territories here in Victoria. But when we talk about forests or really about any uh, environmental issue, we need to acknowledge that, that, that every tree uh, in, in, in BC grows on the territory of a nation. And, uh, and that nation at the end of the day needs to, needs to have a say what happens to those trees. Um, so we need to, we need to recognize uh, that. And, uh, and if you're a settler like me, uh, recognize that that what we're advocating uh, for for changes we're advocating for changes on land that doesn't belong to us um, keeping that in our minds and our hearts and, and figuring out the right way to do that uh, moving forward um, so the, the BC timber sales again a, a government agency and and we're using this story map to build uh, build pressure on the government uh, again our, our process isn't complicated um, you know uh, we we go on the BC timber sales website we go on other government mapping websites we find out uh, where BC timber sales is logging and where they're planning to log and then we load up our, our camping gear uh, and our and our camera equipment and and we head out there and we have a look and uh, it's 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 not hard it's, it's not like sometimes you get you, see some egregious logging and, and sometimes you don't. Everywhere that I've been to uh, that's a BC timber sales area is, uh, is really bad logging. Um, big, big clear cuts, huge stumps in, uh, in forests that's so incredible and, and getting scarcer by the day. Um, so, so I have no reason to, uh, to believe that, that BC timber sales logging is, is any different anywhere else uh, in the province. Um, but the problem is uh, we can't get to to every place. So the hope with this story map is that more people will share it. Uh, the link's right there in the uh, comments. Uh, if you're watching, uh, please share that with your friends. Uh, and, and, and they'll head out to places, maybe take some pictures, uh, or just send us some information. Contact me and say, you know, hey, there's this, this valley uh, near, near where I live in the Okanagan or the Kootenays and, and BC timber sales is, uh, is, is getting ready to log some, some really important forest there. And then we can, we can start to paint a clearer picture of, of what this agency is up to. Why is this so important right now? Uh, it's important right now because in spite of everything else that's going on in, in spite of the pandemic, uh, the BC government is uh, taking or at least claiming to be taking a look at the laws and policies uh, governing uh, old growth. So last year, uh, after, after years of activism uh, and, and action, uh, concerted action, um, both, both on the phones uh, and in the streets and in the woods by, by activists like you, the BC government finally said, okay, look, uh, we know our old growth uh, policies are broken and we're going to, uh, we're going to take a look at them. Uh, we're going to undertake a strategic review. Um, the, the whole point of doing a review uh, was, was criticized uh, by Wilderness Committee and others because, uh, because um, you know, the, you, don't need to, you don't need to do a huge multi-month review. The problem is old growth forests aren't renewable and we're still logging them uh, at staggering rates and that's not sustainable. Um, the government, the government went that route. Uh, we participated in it. We encouraged uh, thousands of citizens to participate in it, which you did. And uh, and the, the two-person panel that did that review submitted their report uh, to government a couple of months ago. And government is now uh, looking at their recommendations and uh, and will be issuing a response to those recommendations. We think sometime in the next couple months. So. This is, this is an extremely important time. Uh, MLA's uh, government officials are, are hearing you know, from, from constituents and from members of the public uh, about all sorts of different things right now. Uh, there's so many dire needs that this pandemic has, has brought up. Uh, and, it, uh, and, 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 and one of those that can't be ignored is, is forests. This is, uh, it's a crisis, but it's also a massive opportunity uh, to make a shift in this fundamental industry uh, in which a lot of people work, a lot of people depend, but also uh, pertains to forests, which are part of 
uh, part of part of the culture and the history of, of the indigenous peoples on this land uh, and part of the the identity uh, for for this province at large so uh, what happens to forest has to do uh, it, it's critical for for our, our, our decolonization and reconciliation goals it's critical for our climate goals for water management for wildlife habitat um, the the importance for this uh, the importance to get this right goes on and on and on and this time when our economy has largely been shut down and now we have to turn it back on now we have to pump money and resources into uh, it to get it back going uh, let's turn it back on the right way and that means uh, protecting old growth it means investing in other forms of forestry and other forms of forest economy so non-timber forest products uh, tourism, all these other values that that can actually be sustained beyond another decade, uh, which is which is essentially the lifespan of, of the old growth logging industry. So we have a, an action page uh, to uh, to push the government on this. It's a little further up in the comments, um, and uh, the movement uh, to protect old growth is, uh, is is what the link's called there. Uh, and and we have a number of different ways uh, that you can step up and take action uh, in a, in a way that's uh, that's safe and uh, and keeps you and your community safe uh, during during this COVID time. And uh, and and again, we really encourage uh, everyone to to make a call to send an email because we know that politicians are going to prioritize the things they're hearing about again and again and again. And uh, and we need to make sure uh, we need to make sure they're hearing about forests. There's a cure the forest for the trees pun in there, but I'm not going to make it for those of you that tuned in at the start. You probably had enough puns. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, again, I'd love to hear your uh, feedback about the story map, your feedback about uh, our old growth campaign. Uh, I'll open it up for questions now. And uh, just while I'm answering questions, uh, keep in mind that we are going to be uh, getting back out into the field again as we can safely. Um, we're working to put pressure on this government to do the right thing and to make it easier for the public to do that uh, through stories, uh, l through tools like the story map. And uh, if you support that work, if you think it has uh, value, uh, we could use your help. Um, COVID's uh, a tough, tough situation for everyone and it's tough on charities too. Um, so we'll put a donation uh, link in the comments here now. Um, and, uh, and yeah, if you're able to, uh, to help us continue to do this work, uh, that's, that can, we can't appreciate that enough. Um, so I'll jump into the comments now for, for 10 minutes or so. There's a comment here from Sue. What species are dependent on old growth habitat on Vancouver Island specifically? So that's a great uh, question. Uh, Vancouver Island is all, all, often uh, looked at uh, differently, Vancouver Island and the coast, um, because uh, the forests are a little bit different. It's obviously wetter uh, and, and, and more precipitation. It's, uh, it's uh, cooler as well. So uh, huge uh, just natural disruptions, uh, such as forest fires, aren't as uh, aren't as common they're not as uh, as a fundamental part of the history on the coast so the the large-scale disruption of, of industrial logging has has a massive impact on the coast here uh, there is uh, some substantial old growth protection uh, further north in the great bear rainforest but the south coast of british columbia uh, is is extremely fragmented uh, by logging and by urban development. So most most people in uh, in BC live on Southern Vancouver Island or in the Lower Mainland, uh, and and the rest of Vancouver Island is where uh, a lot of the potential to protect uh, substantial tracts of old growth is. Um, and uh, and as a result, it's got it's got several species that that can live nowhere else uh, because the rest of that habitat is gone. So species like the marbled murrelet, uh, which is a really cute uh, little seabird, um, and uh, they nest only in old growth. They're uh, they're really poor flyers, uh, and they nest high up in the old growth canopy, uh, and they fish out at uh, at sea during the day. And they come home and to get to their nest they can't really kind of swoop in and 
hover and land gracefully on a branch like like a lot of other forest birds can so they just kind of fly into the tree and crash into the moss and if it's a smaller tree with with not as thick uh, a base of moss uh, and kind of more spindly branches it's harder for them to do that and they, and they can't nest there um, additionally you've got uh, amphibian species like the red-legged frog uh, and uh, they can only live in old growth, uh, other birds like the northern uh, goshawk. And one of the most exciting for me is, is that when it comes to life in the forest, uh, we're kind of only scratching uh, the surface uh, of, of, uh, of, what, uh, of what lives in the forest. So in the old growth canopy, there's these thick, uh, thick layers of soil and moss uh, and, and organic matter, decomposing organic matter, and it's a hundred feet up in the canopy. And within, uh, within those uh, environments, there are invertebrate species, insects, and, uh, and there's often uh, new species discovered uh, regularly uh, by biologists. And, and I think that uh, uh, of, all, of all the good arguments uh, to protect old growth, the fact that we that we still aren't even close to understanding fully what's there, that's a, that's a pretty good one. Um, there's another uh, question here from JP, uh, is, is it strictly industry uh, that operates uh, BC timber sales? So BC timber sales is, is the government uh, agency. So how it works is, uh, this, is this is a good question and, and, and we find ourselves clarifying this a lot. How it works is uh, BC Timber Sales uh, staff, uh, our government employees, they, they're housed within the Ministry of Forests and they uh, can plan logging and lay out cut blocks on about one fifth of the land base of, uh, of British Columbia. So if you click on the interactive map on the story map link uh, further up in the comments, all the areas that are kind of the light red shading those are areas that BC Timber Sales can plan logging in. And what they do is they go in uh, and they, they have timber cruisers and foresters go through, lay out a cut block, uh, assess how much uh, timber and, and what the value of that cut block is. Uh, post that, build roads to, uh, to the cut blocks. Uh, sometimes it's two or three, sometimes it's five or six. Um, depends on the auction, and then any logging company can bid on that. So you or I could form a logging company and put in a bid on uh, on that uh, on those blocks, and then the highest bidder gets it, uh, and then and then that bidder would. Uh, they're usually smaller logging companies. Uh, they're logging companies without tenure. Uh, and they go in and, uh, and, and either with their own crews or they hire contractors to uh, cut that timber. And then uh, the, the revenue from auctioning it off goes into BC timber sales uh, so they can keep operating. And, uh, and then the, uh, the, the buyer can then uh, sell that uh, timber, sell those forest products uh, however they want or, or whoever they want to. Um, so that's generally uh, how it works. Uh, again, it's not the only, by any means, the only problem with uh, logging or with old growth logging uh, in BC, but it's, uh, it's a really big one. Um, they, uh, again, you know, this is, a, this is a, a, an agency that should be managed in the public interest and, and they should be saying, look, you know, there's, there's so little old growth left. Uh, we're a government agency protecting these forests is in the public interest. Uh, and we're going to direct uh, our agency to, to discontinue old growth logging and, and focus on second growth logging, uh, eventually third growth logging, the kind of forestry activity that, again, can actually be sustained. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers uh, your question. Are there any more? Uh, where are some old growth forests that we can go see? That question's from Joe. Uh, so on Vancouver Island, I mean, first and foremost, uh, I have to say uh, right now, uh, during, during this pandemic, uh, any travel uh, outside of, of where you live, your neighborhood or your home community uh, needs to be done uh, adhering to all the provincial uh, health guidelines. Um, and, uh, and, and as safely as possible for you and the people who live near where you're going. Um, I think uh, as, as environmental activists, we have a, an absolute responsibility 
to uh, to make sure that uh, we're going uh, we're not going into the territory of a nation that uh, that that we're not welcome in. Um, so we should always be looking up uh, a whose territory we live in uh, and whose territory a forest that we or another area that we want to go and visit is and uh, and, and and do some research uh, try and touch base with that nation or, or, or go on their website uh, see if uh, if they're comfortable uh, with with visitors coming into their territory at this time and I know a lot of nations aren't um, so for old growth uh, there's classic areas like Carmana uh, provincial Park, um, which is on south uh, western Vancouver Island in uh, Dididat territory. Uh, it's a protected forest, uh, which is kind of nice, relaxing to go to uh, because of campaigning by the Wilderness Committee and others uh, in, the, in the early 1990s. Um, next door is the Walbrand Valley, which is unprotected, um, and it's accessible through Lake Cowichan uh, and, and another uh, incredible growth forest. Um, there's pockets of old growth uh, around uh, the lower mainland, uh, places like the Chilliwack Valley. There's still some pockets in the Fraser Canyon area. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the story map uh, on the interactive map has some, uh, has some highlight areas that will, that will tell you where there's old growth, um, most of which is threatened by BC timber sales. And the satellite feature is really neat because you can almost see old growth uh, versus second growth old growth. I was talking to a reporter about the story map last week, and and uh, old growth tends tends to look more on a satellite map, more like a kind of rough, uh, like a 1970s shag carpet, and uh, and second growth is much more uniform, more like a, a mini golf green or something like that. Um, if you have any questions uh, about other old growth areas, uh, shoot the Wilderness Committee uh, a message on 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 Facebook uh, or send me an email. My contact info is on the story map. And uh, again, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off uh, for the uh, for the morning. Um, but thank you for uh, for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Uh, again, uh, let me know uh, if you have feedback about the story map. Um, please, please take a few minutes to uh, take action on our on our uh, old growth action page. Also posted in the comments. Because um, like I say, the next couple months, uh, the government is, is going to be making some big decisions uh, about whether to change, uh, old growth, whether to change uh, rules pertaining to old growth management or not. And, and we need to make sure there's as much uh, pressure on, on them as possible to do that. So uh, again, this is Torrance with the Wilderness Committee, and thanks so much for tuning in today. I appreciate it.